This is the Data Download, your guide to upping your game when it comes to managing and accessing data in your organization. For Calibra, I'm your host, Jay Miller. Data governance programs and principles have been around a really long time. And that's evolved to include much more. And we call that data intelligence. With the recent rapid rise of AI use cases, there is a stronger need than ever to apply those principles. And we brought in an expert uh, to get into what I think is a pretty interesting side effect of this. Those very same principles help us to achieve even more value from our data. Yeah, I'm Robic Alexandru, um, analyst at Forrester for about two years and a half now. Joined the data governance team, data management data governance team. We're overall serving mm -hmm. different personas that we uh, deal with at Forrester as our clients, uh, but mainly focusing on data governance uh, with everything that goes around it, um, uh, looking at data quality as well a bit. But my focus for the last couple of years has been the data governance uh, solutions market. And starting this year, very exciting. I'm also looking into ESG reporting in relation to um, Ooh, really? data management and data governance. So that's a bit of a bridge that we're making there. Um, so next to the data governance team, also joining the, the sustainability team at Forrester. That's pretty cool. Before Forrester, yeah, practitioner basically on uh, data management and uh, also data governance topics. And uh, yeah, now join the, the dark side of the analysts uh, the world. That's <laughs> 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 we like to call it, but uh, with a nice wow. overview on the on what every when, what's happening on the market. <laughs> Got it. Well, very cool. Uh, we're really glad to he uh, have you here today. So uh, so why don't we get into it? Data governance, data intelligence, data quality, that's your thing, right? So why don't we start it off, if you could, can you can you just define data intelligence and data governance for us? How do you define it and frame it for, for the folks that you work with? Yeah, so I will start with, um, with data governance in that sense, because we do have sort of an agreed definition within Forrester. I'm going to start with that. Uh -huh. So we look at data governance solutions as a suite of, uh, of software, basically, and services at the same time. Uh, that help create, manage, assess, and evaluate, I would say assess, evaluate uh, corporate policies, protocols, measurements, uh, basically anything that goes around data acquisition, data access, um, and leveraging data for business value. Hmm. And our different capabilities, functionalities that we look at, such as uh, data definitions, data policies, data quality, stewardship functionalities, literacy, okay. regulations, compliance, ethical considerations, uh. privacy and security, risk management, and you know the the list can continue basically end to end. I'm trying to take notes here uh, with you. That's a, <laughs> no, it's a it, long I mean, list. That, that's what I'm, I mean. When you give a definition, it, it depends how deep you want to go into that into that topic. Yeah, well, it's a broad brush. It's a very broad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to cover, and and you sort of do have to list out a lot of those things. I think when you're when you're getting into the into what a definition is for a data governance, let's say. Uh, program or the software and platforms I think that, that you sort of cover and, and get into, yeah? Yeah, and at the same time, you also need to take into account that there's, you know, quite an overlap with different other topics. So if you want to just have the definition, you know, like the, the very strict definition of a, of a domain, it's almost impossible with data governance because you also have overlaps with different other topics that become a coverage area themselves or, you know, a market or a solution. So, yeah. So you, your area of coverage is around solutions, uh, it sounds like, right? Yeah, solutions and but also practices and yeah. Right, right. So, so, uh, so the solutions cover the, the software and the services around the uh, data governance program, right? And the functions that that have yeah. in an organization, right? That's correct. What would you call, let's say, the, the key components of you know, a program that you need tools for, right? So everything I think every program is going to be a people, process, and technology, you know, approach, right? That that you're going to, you would advise folks to take. What kinds of components do you think are make up that um, that mix with respect to the tools? What areas of a data governance program you just des you describe policy, you described access, you described driving value, data literacy, definitions, right? A lot of different the quality, right? We mentioned that. So where, where are tools um, a really good answer uh, or a good part of the answer for, uh, for helping folks who are managing those programs to be successful? Uh, I think it starts with, um, I would say the basic is the data catalog in cell itself, right? Being able to, to map out the data that you, data assets that you have and, and structure that and bring it into a digestible manner 
into your organization and be able to to manage that on the long term and uh, get value out of it. Uh-huh. But then you also have, of course, the, the business glossary on top of that, which connects your uh, data assets to the actual you know, business goals and objectives and the value that you would like to get out of that data and how you structure that within the organization that is consistent and organized in such a way that you can, that, that all the roles within your organization can have access to it and, and use it in the best way possible. I think you're you're hitting on something that's that's really kind of interesting there. So when we first think of the word glossary, it's, you know, a list of terms and some definitions that might go along with those terms, right? But what you just did there is you, you really elevated the importance of a glossary and what it can cover. I heard you say, you know, you've got a data catalog that maps out where all your data is at your enterprise, and then you've got a business glossary, and you jumped right up to framing and defining your company's objectives, and connecting that with the data itself, connecting company objectives to the data that's in your catalog. Tell me, tell me more about that. That's a really interesting way to look at it. Yeah, well, I, I would start with you know the the, the concept of, of business glossary in that sense because oftentimes we get this question, especially from my colleagues that are not really you know they're specialized in different other areas, but not in data governance or. Um, so I, I hear, okay, it's business and it's glossary. It sounds very straightforward, but there's a lot behind it, right? And what you just said, there's you can take it to to different levels depending on maturity and depending on your on your goals. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're we're way past the the times where we were just collecting data for the sake of data, and that would just you know define sort of the cataloging, pure cataloging definition or just the term. But now when talking about data catalog, it's not just about cataloging, right? It's about, right. you mentioned it earlier, intelligence, right? Intelligence cataloging or intelligence, uh, putting your data together in such a way that, that you can work with it for, for the scope of business value. So the business glossary comes on top of the data catalog to, to organize the data in such a way that it's accessible, that it's consistent, that it brings all the definitions together so there's no sort of confusion around what does this mean? How do we use this? What does this mean for me, but not for someone else? Um, so all those questions, they get the answers uh, written down, you know, classified and nicely organized within the, the business glossary to make that data accessible and um, possible to work with. Um, and having that within the enterprise into, in one place helps mitigate a lot of uh, a lot of headaches and a lot of problems later on right so that's the goal of a data governance program i would say i think that enterprise view that you have is also it mitigates the risks right uh by having it all in one place can you get into that a little more for us i would say overall just the general goal of a, da- of a data governance program right it's to to bring all your data assets together, all your policies, all your rules, all your roles and accesses and, and, and you know, the, the, the core team and the extended team that they can have access to that data and work with it and, um, again, get value out of it. But you can, you can look at that from different angles, right? So you can look at that from a more holistic perspective, like the enterprise view, or you can have localized data governance initiatives and programs that go a little bit more into specific departments or specific business units or specific projects within the enterprise. So you have governance at different levels, I would say, right? And um, from that perspective, there's specific characteristics and features that apply to each approach, right? So the enterprise, as I said, it's more a more holistic uh, view. It follows the overall corporate strategies and goals and business goals at corporate level or enterprise level. Oftentimes you see a more centralized framework there with, depending on on maturity of the maturity of the company, it can also go into a more federated model, but it sort of floats between between centralized and federated. Uh, Whereas if you go towards more localized data governance initiatives, you'll see a more um, decentralized, again, depending on, um, maturity, it might go into federated as well in connection right, to the right. to the higher enterprise level. And, well, company objectives, like you said before, right? So yeah, ideally that happens. Sometimes it doesn't, but <laughs> yeah, right, right. So fully distributed might miss the mark with an enterprise perspective, having you know driving value toward company objectives, and then maybe maybe you're also saying a fully centralized. Uh, approach might be limiting as far as having you know specific context in different, uh, let's say, business functions in different departments. So adopting a federated approach can be really valuable because you're you're getting the best of both perspectives. I think the the sort of the discovery of, you know, it can be in the middle. It's not just the extremes, but the federated point. 
that's like the sweet spot of um, both a localized and an enterprise perspective. So I think that's where we're aiming at from a maturity perspective, right? It can start at different points, but ideally you get to that point where you can combine the two and get the best value out of the two models. I would imagine there can be some tension along the way, right? Uh, when, when you know, no matter where you start, like you said, you can start as that central and then get more federated or you can start local and then get more federated. I would imagine that there's some tensions and controversies around around all of this from an organizational standpoint. How do you, how, what have you seen out there and how do you navigate those those sorts of tensions that might exist? Yeah, that's a very good question. And it's, uh, it's again, going back to maturity level and where companies start from, right? Because you, you have companies that have been on the market for quite a while and have been investing in their data governance program or in their data management back before data governance was even a, a thing or a department in itself or a program. Um, and I think for companies that started with more more of a legacy, mm -hmm. it, it is quite a challenge to move from, from the old ways to a more federated model. And as you said, there's friction and there are um, sometimes conflicts. And um, also it takes time and quite an investment to, to, to refurbish everything or to, to restart a program. So that can take quite a long time for some companies. But at the same time, we see, um, you know, it's never too late to start, I would say. It's uh, every day that you're postponing the, the, the painful moment of starting. Uh, to make some changes, I think it costs you even more. Yeah. Um, but as a general sort of best practice is, you know, start today and start small and start in parallel. So don't just throw everything you 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 built until now away, but but try to map out slowly your your sort of most important processes and try to prove value because that that's one of the main friction points and one of the the main sort go. of right. challenges is to get budget is to to prove value is to 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 justify the changes that you want to make in the interest of business, right? And I, I guess if no matter where you're starting from and migrating to, if you take the approach where whatever your governance program is doing, as long as it's leading up to those company objectives, it's literally contributing to the value that the company is trying to drive. That's sort of the goal, but it's also one of the challenges oftentimes because there is a there there there, there is often a gap. Mm -hmm. Between whatever you want to call it, departments, teams, levels within the companies that that um, deal, like manage these two different processes, and that's where it's important. Uh, uh, if you if you start with a data governance program, or if you want to refurbish your current data governance program and take it to a next level, I think it's important to make sure that that there is that connection, that that you have that leadership connection with with the sort of uh, enterprise level where you know where your 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 business goals are within the company, right? So you don't start blind or you assume these are our business values, but they're not maybe aligned with, with the corporate or enterprise level. You know what? We, we've been talking a little bit about, you know, uh, changing and evolving an existing data governance program you know, from one model to a more federated model, right? Uh, in alignment with company objectives. Why don't, we, why don't we take a step back for a minute? What if we're just beginning a data governance program and there is nothing existing? How should we think about starting that kind of program at, at, at our organizations? I think the most important part is to, to identify um, your why, like why, why are you doing this? Or your, your main goal for starting this initiative or what led you to, to, to actually taking this initiative. Then mapping out a very clear image of your, of your stakeholders, like who do you want to involve? In this process, I think that's always very, um, it's one of the sort of the, the, the underestimated steps <laughs> where, um, and everybody says, you know, you need to start small and you need to start now. And uh, I'm, I said that as well. Uh, but by saying that, I'm not saying don't, don't do your homework, right? So do your homework and see who are your stakeholders. And even if you can't involve everyone at the same time, have that mapped out and have that in mind. I liked your phrase. You said, start small, but do your homework. <laughs> well, I mean, start small, but not not by ignoring the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm just going to start the data governance program within my business, uh, my group of business analysts. Uh -huh. or, it's not really how it goes, because at the end of the day, you will have to, you'll have to communicate to, uh, with IT or the other way around, right? If IT starts the data governance um, initiative, uh, they will have to talk to business. And in, in, in some companies, it's easier than in others, I would say. Um, and what I what I sometimes discuss and, and, and advise clients on our, our customers is that 
starting a data governance program is not necessarily starting a new department and hiring a new bunch of people. You oftentimes have those roles within the company. And um, the, the fastest and the, the most efficient way is to work with what you currently have. So having a, an analysis on what you already have, on your roles and responsibilities, a gap analysis, what, what you're missing, that's your starting point on building the data governance team. Mm. And is that a specific department? Is that a separate uh, team? Not always. Depending on the size of your company or on the maturity, you often you'll see that you have existing roles sort of meeting in a, in a I, I call it a floating type of team. You know, it, it floats on top of the business and the IT department right. and helps mm -hmm. structure and organize things that matter mm -hmm. for both. And I also liked how you said, you know, understand your why, like what led you here? Why are you starting this? So in these days, I think there's the, with the rapid rise of what are called uh, large language models or LLM and generative AI, you know, the, you know, this year, you know, AI is kind of exploding the use of it, the understanding of it, the potential value that, that companies are getting out of it. I imagine that why is changing with, <laughs> with, for data governance programs also pretty rapidly. What, what are you, what are you seeing out there so far and how do we, you know, should we, how can we leverage uh, our data governance programs to mitigate those kinds of potential risks, whether they're regulatory or you, you brought up uh, ethical concerns that you're now getting into. You're now a part of the ESG world, right? Um, so the, so the, uh, the, the S part of that, uh, I think comes into play. The G part of that comes into play here with where generative AI is going. So why don't we, why don't we get into that subject a little bit and what are you, what are you seeing so far? What do you advise? It's still a sort of a new topic, right? Um, but from a governance perspective, there is already, you know, there's, there is a conversation out there already for the last couple of years or even more probably that is not just data governance, but it's AI governance, right? How do you mix those two? Um, and in the beginning of the conversation, you asked me about, uh, definition of data governance, but also intelligence, right? Um, and I want to go back a little bit to that because what we define at first, or at least as uh, we call it connective intelli connected intelligence, and that's a, that's a term that my, my colleague Michelle gets um, sort of coined a few years ago. And I like that term because it brings the concept of um, data, data management, data governance with a purpose, data for AI, right? Preparing like not just data insights, but preparing data for AI. And I think that's the, the precursor and the, the sort of the preparation phase that led to generative AI and, and everything that we see right now and happening out there, right? Um, so it came from, from a, a need of making data intelligent and, and having the right type of data in terms of quality, in terms of consistency, in terms of everything that you look into when, when talking about data management and data governance. Um, taking it to the next level where it serves a more intelligent purpose, right? Um, and we talked about AI, just AI, for the longest time. And now gen generative AI, I think, is just the, sort of the, the next level of understanding what can we do with that data? What, what, what kind of insights can the data bring? Um, and how can, you, can we use that? How can we apply that? or to, to, to get value out of it. Right. And the, the sort of the scary part that, that we're looking at right now is that until now, we could control it quite easily, right? AI was quite controllable. At this point, it, it, it sort of feels like, it, like it, it, it gets a little bit out of hand, right? Like that there's this application and there's things happening where you don't really know in which box to put them and how to classify them and how to put controls and policies. So I think that's where the, 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 the governance of AI in its current shape, it becomes a challenge, right? It becomes a challenge, but there's a, it's an, a growing need to give that kind of attention toward your AI program, I think, because of what you're saying. It's the, the, the scary output is what's different here. If you're calling it scary, right? Or just the, you don't know what it's going to produce. It's gen, it's literally generating content for you, whatever that content is. So having some, some sort of framing around it so that it's doing the right thing, the ethical thing, the legal thing, right? I think at this point, the scary thing is that you can control the input, but not really the output because the output is, is not always just based on, it's not just a, a reshuffle of the data that you give it, that you put in. And then it, it spits out something 
you know, that contains the same type of data. It, it, it got to a point, so generative AI, it got to a point where it doesn't think by itself, but it can get creative with data. <laughs> Let's put it like that. <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah. 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 It certainly does. Let's think about, you know, your, your governance framework that you have now that helps you manage, let's say, your data policies, your regulatory compliance, your ethical posture, right? So if you've already got a data governance program that's that's helping you manage your data that way, and you're beginning to think of how to apply it to AI, especially nowadays with where generative AI is going, how can we use what we have? How can we start with what we have to to begin to build some some capabilities so that we can avoid some problems down the line. Yeah, at this point in time what we what we have and is mainly uh control over the over our our internal processes and workflows, right? So you know what's running within your company and you know what kind of what kind of yeah, processes you're 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 looking at, right? Um and if you're already using AI for any sort of applications, you have that mapped out and you know what goes in and ideally you also have at least an overview of what goes out of your um, AI models, right? Um, and yeah, maybe maybe it's not a very complete answer in that sense, but I think what's important is to still focus on the quality of your data and uh, you know making sure that the mm-hmm. input that you're putting into your algorithms is still uh, reliable and and the quality you can you can be accountable for that and it's transparent and you know all the sort of the metrics that you have in your data governance program. But further than that, how to go into um, um, into the concept of, of governing and managing your generative AI uh, applications, I think that's that's something that is still coming up. Do you see opportunity with, let's say, the policy components of your governance program helping to figure that out? That really needs to be there. I'm not sure if it's if it exists there out there enough at this point, but it, it is a very important it is a very important part of it because uh, that's where your um, basically your rules and um, your 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 universe of trying to to contain and control. Well, control is a big word, but I have an overview of uh, <laughs> of what's happening there, right? And, and that that's the only way of of staying transparent and accountable okay. towards your your entire universe of stakeholders in that sense, right? It's not just your customer data or your internal data or uh, your uh, that's outputting new data, right? I mean that's the whole that's the whole point of it, right? So okay, got it. So I think what I'm hearing you say is you can leverage your policy related data governance capabilities to help you but it's going to be a really evolving process. So it's a good starting point, but there's going to, you're going to need to, const, you know, evolve that, shape it, learn from it yourself in order to uh, have the right kinds of control. Yeah, I think I think it's a, it's a bit of a turning point on, on gen- generative AI and the fact that it's being adopted so fast and so, you know, enthusiastically, I would say. Um, and there's already you no know, different initiatives on trying to 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 work on, on the policies in general, right? Like also not on just, like technical or software data governance policies, but, you know, uh, the government level policies and all sorts of initiatives on trying to give it a shape and try to keep things under control up to a certain point, right? So that's happening as we're speaking right now. So I think there's going to be, it's a challenge, but it's also, it's going to be an opportunity for development um, on different areas of, of, of software and data governance and data management in general. Yep, both a challenge and an opportunity. That's 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 the name of the game. I think that that's. I think we're just watching that happening right now, right? It's uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, look, I think we're we're in we're in the field, right? So we we also get to have a say, right, and shape it, right? And many of the listeners here on the on the episode also uh, get to have a say in what that what that winds up looking like. So it's pretty exciting to be a part of that. All right. Well, I guess I got excited a little a little excited here about about generative AI. And why don't we why don't we get back to let's say general data governance programs, uh, you know, a big picture. I would I would keep that for 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 a future topic, and I will I will I make know. sure to maybe. Um, get one of my calls from generative AI to join as well, because I, it's, a, it's an interesting conversation to have. 
sort of a joint conversation there. I I, I agree. I I, oh, I I accept that offer. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll. <laughs> thanks for getting me back on track, Rulika. <laughs> so I didn't finish the previous one, but I, I think I mentioned the most important, you know, first steps in that sense. What I do want to add another one there, and that that to finish that topic, you know, make sure that you have your your metrics in place. That's that's always, you know, people start data governance. Some, sometimes they start initiatives like a very sort of philosophical, um, but keeping it very sort of practical and having your metrics in place and uh, identifying your your goals and um, I think that's uh, that's key for for the program. All right, so give give me some metrics. What 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 are ways to measure the success of our data governance program? Maybe even especially in the early stages. What are those metrics? Um, I would just. Go for the general ones, you know, like make sure that you have metrics for data quality or compliance or uh, quality, how compliance, do you okay. measure your stewardship involvement or, you know, ability uh-huh. to manage data and to, 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 to properly build processes and policies around around the data that you have. But that's that's very specific for, I think, for per industry and per company, what, what kind of metrics you have there. I, yeah. I mean, there's there's specific, very specific metrics for each of the each, each of the industries or or um, and they can have different, they can come under different names, right? It's, uh, and if you look at, for example, data quality is one of the important things that you want to to make sure that you have data error rates because data quality used to be a little bit on the edge of, you know, data management, data quality, data governance, but we see it quite often nowadays coming um, into the data data governance conversation as well. Yeah. There's different data quality measures that are that are coming back in the conversations with clients nowadays, and it's uh, it's becoming a more, yeah very important. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, going all the way back to your beginning statements, I think if 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 our policy compliance statistics violations and all of that, maybe uh, if I think of those as leading indicators of success, a lagging indicator might be, well, by reducing all of our policy violations, are we achieving our company objectives better, faster, right? More completely as well. So tying back continually to that business value, the company objectives, I think we want to start thinking about how we can, let's say, measure our way toward those lagging indicators of success, which is that company value, right? Yeah, that, that can be one of your company values, of course. And that also, and it's not, it not, doesn't just set you up for success, but it also gives you the right tools to, to, to evaluate how your, how your data governance program is going. And that's one of the, I think, one of the questions you mentioned in the beginning, how do you start? How do you assess? Um, by by starting with setting up your metrics properly, it, it gives you the right tools and the yeah. I would say the correct data at the end of the day to measure how you're doing and where you are and to prove value and to continue you know growing that program or and mm-hmm. this is not just on data quality or compliance but also on what I said earlier on stewardship right how many people are actually using your platform uh-huh. how are they using okay. it yeah. you have ways of measuring data usage on the platform and not just by your and customers, but by your actual roles and your users within the platform, within the organization. And there you can um, use that to measure value of, of your data governance program by adoption, for example, or um, by the time that you're saving with some of the processes that otherwise would have been done manually or by the error rates that you were, you're you know, improving compared to before um, when some of the, the workflows were being done manually or yeah so the number of people involved the time that you're spending on it if you can translate that into money or into any sort of valuation that matters for your business <laughs> for your business goals that's one way to to assess and to prove yeah value of your governance program so setting those metrics and um making sure that they're relevant for your for your um overall business goals and enterprise goal or whatever you want to call it corporate goals um i think that's key you know, I love the notion that a great data intelligence program joins a well-managed catalog of your enterprise's data assets with some more traditional data governance concepts like a business glossary. But here, that glossary isn't just words and definitions. It can also represent your company's business objectives. This winds up being the basis for connecting data to value, right? Data is supporting you directly toward achieving your company's business objectives. Those goals are usually tied to money, right? We also talked about how a federated data intelligence approach meets the needs of an enterprise much more effectively than either end of a decentralized versus a centralized spectrum. And we'll want to think about heading toward that federated approach as sort of a a maturity goal for our programs. We may start out our program in a distributed way, 
right, where governance is kind of happening nicely, but it's local within departments. No connection to the rest of the business, you know, those dreaded silos. Or you might start with a fully centralized approach. Yeah, and that might be good from a high level perspective, but it's got no local context. The sweet spot is that federated approach that connects those dots for us and really maximizes the value. Now, we can't not talk about how AI is exploding in visibility right now. I'm talking about generative AI, large language models. These things have the ability to create content like text, images, audio, right? Not just make predictions for some movie we might like. Making sure we help data scientists avoid bias in data, follow policies, regulations. That's always been a driving need for AI work, but now more than ever, it's really necessary, both for the data that's collected and used to train your models and what's included in the generated output. Imagine this, there's personal private info being used as an input, right? To generate a business proposal. Yikes, personal private info, that's not good. Separately, imagine the output from a chatbot, right? It suggests something harmful in real life, really scary. A great data intelligence program now is gonna help data scientists avoid that risk, right? And it's also gonna help them make their data products safely. That same program has another benefit, right? On the other side of that, and that's to help them accelerate the work in the long term, because they're following that guidance proactively rather than fixing issues after the fact. All of this drives more value faster. And I think we can all get behind that. For Calibra, this is the Data Download. I'm your host, Jamie Lachera, and I'll see you next time.